And it's talking about how $53 million in prepaid credits to credit cards are in the process of being distributed to migrant families. Now I understand what people are thinking about, what they're wondering about here. Because they're saying to themselves, what's the problem if you're on the left? There's a big problem if you're on the right. No, it ain't that simple. We have to understand that <clears throat> we don't want people eating out of garbage cans. We don't want people starving. We don't want people separated from their children and children separated from their parents. We don't want this. We don't want to be cruel and inhumane. But illegal immigration has become incredibly pervasive since the Biden administration has taken office. We all know that he's capitulated to the extreme left. And even though we wouldn't say specifically and definitively that the borders are open, every time you turn around, particularly in states like Texas and Arizona and to a lesser degree, California, it is an extreme problem. You know, we can't put, we can't spend our money putting up signs that say, don't come into the country because again, it's the U.S. That's not going to work. You're going to have to put up things to harm people. But again, every time Texas does, every time they do something like put up razor wire or doing whatever, I mean, you can't do that because they haven't harmed them. So we're going to sue you. We are going to sue you. And that's the reason why Trump is going to be reelected. That's the reason. Because right there, we understand. I think, I think even leftists, some, are starting to understand that we have a corrupt administration in power. We do. I mean, again, they work for the World Economic Forum. They don't work for you. They don't work for me. We have to get that. We have to understand that. I mean, again, the illegal migrant crisis is happening across the U.S., yes, but it's happening across uh, the Western world. I mean, again, people are landing in Europe, landing in England and, and France and Italy. They're coming over. They're coming over in droves. And again, this is being done on purpose. We have to, they have to destabilize the Western world. They have to. Because again, man, this is the only parts of the world that we have freedom. That we have, we have, we have freedom. We have power over ourselves, over our destiny in a way. We don't, we don't take hand deaths. We don't take, you know, we, we do for ourselves. We do for ourselves. And again, man, we have government, but we have limited government. But again, they don't want that. They want control. And again, the only way to destabilize things in the Western world, including here in the U.S., is again, mass migration. Because again, that's going to cause chaos and that's also going to bring the mindset from these third world countries over here. So again, man, people like Stephen Smith, Stephen A. Smith, they do understand to a degree what is going on. I mean, Eric Adams in New York, $53 million to give out debit cards. Come on. Come on, man. That's only going to cause more people to come over. I mean, not only are you giving them free room, free board, but you're giving them debit cards to buy what they want. It's a problem in New York City. My home. And I got to tell you something right now. If it wasn't for my daughter being there, I'd be gone. Don't like what I'm seeing. But it's not just because of migrants or illegal immigration. It's because it's mayhem. Folks don't know how to act. It's not an accident that the former president keeps bringing up law and order, law and order, law and order, because... Those are catch words. Those are the kind of things that make you go to the polls and vote out of fear. And it works. Throughout history, it has worked. But now this is a different kind of fear, but a fear tinged with frustration. Because when you hear 
about migrants receiving $53 million in prepaid credit cards. The Eric Adams administration in the mayor's office in New York City will tell you it's going to save about $600,000 a month. But that's not how poor people are looking at it. You know what black poor people are looking at it like? You know what Latinos who happen to be poor that arrived in this country are looking at it like? Where that money come from for us? I could have used it. I could use the extra 500 a month. I could use the extra $1,000 a month. I could do that. The thing is, man, when you bring up black and brown, black and brown people could use an extra 500 bucks a month. Poor black and brown people. And again, man, you leave out white because you're specifically saying black and brown. That is what you're saying. I mean, again, you lose people. You lose people when you say that. Again, people can understand just how woke you are. You don't get it. You truly don't get it. I mean, I know to some degree you understand. You understand what's going on. And again, man, Eric Eric Adams, New York, $53 $53 million to be spent on debit cards for illegals? Yeah, it's freaking nuts. I mean, again, it doesn't matter if he saves so money. It doesn't matter. I mean, again, that's an incentive for other people to come over. That's what that is. We're paying for everything. Come on over. Yeah. That's what's being, that, again, that's what they hear. That's what they see. But when you're talking about, man, people like Donald Trump using a catchphrase, law and order. I mean, again, it's not a catchphrase. We understand that we need that. We understand now that things are worse off. And and again, you understand it. You understand things are worse off. And again, people want to feel safe. They want to be feel secure in their country. You know, but, I mean, I, I heard uh, yesterday. yesterday <laughs> They had no clue in California that they were telling city employees not to go out for lunch because it was unsafe. They might get attacked. They might get robbed going out to lunch. And that's what the problem is right there. So again, people, we want law and order. We need law and order. That's the way things need to be. And at one time, we knew this in this country. We understood it's not just a catchphrase. Mayor Adams has decried the bust arrivals as a humanitarian crisis and said that providing food and housing for the migrants will cost about $12 billion over three years. Adams traveled to Latin America on a tour to dissuade potential migrants in Mexico, Colombia, and Ecuador from attempting to come to the city, saying the city, quote, is at capacity, end quote. Let me say this to Mayor Eric Adams, who I respect. That may be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard a politician do. You're going to travel to a country that's starving, that's desolate, that's impoverished, that's desperate to come to the United States of America, and you're going to beg them not to cross borders into the United States and end up in New York City rather than going to politicians right here in America from different states like the Abbots of the world, the DeSantis in Florida, Arizona and beyond, and talking and negotiating with them? You're going to go to citizens and politicians in Latin America, Mexico, Colombia, and Ecuador to ask them for assistance? Have you lost your ever-loving mind? That makes no sense. That's about the worst plan I ever heard in my damn life. Here's an idea. Why don't you get behind people like Greg Abbott? Why don't you get behind people like Ron DeSantis? Why don't you get behind other Republican politicians and shut that damn porter? Again, don't don't vote in ways that go you know, against that. Don't vote all oh, the poor migrants, man. We don't want to put up razor wire. Yeah, we do. Yes, we do. I mean, I, I don't care, man, if that, if that sounds bad. It's not bad. It's not bad to say, hey, look, man, we need secure borders. That's what we need. It doesn't sound bad. I mean, again, if somebody gets hurt on the raised wire, they get hurt. If they drown because they can't get over the buoys, they drown. 
uh, again, I hate to sound cold, but that's the way it is. And it won't happen again, or it'll get less and less. People understand that you can't just walk into this country, be handed stuff. So again, man, what people like Eric Gams need to do is stand behind people like Greg Abbott and people like Rod DeSantis. Stand behind them. Because again, they want what's best for this country. We've got poor, impoverished, starving people who were born and raised in this nation. How in the hell do we come up with a $53 million pilot program for illegals But folks who are here legally are born here. We don't have enough of them. Just like we could come up with billions for Ukraine. But somehow, some way, we can't fix the homeless problem. I'm down for helping Israel. I'm down for helping address the situations with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Okay? I'm down for helping the Ukrainians and fight North Russia. What about poor and desolate citizens here? How the hell do you print money for foreign countries? But you don't print that money to help eradicate folks that are starving right here in the streets of America who were born and raised here. They don't care. They truly don't care about you. They don't care about me. They don't care about this country. And again, man, the reason why they can print money for other countries is because they know they're going to get something in return. It's about the money. It's about power. It's about control. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. They don't care about the homeless person. And again, man, I'm not going to qualify it the same way you do. It doesn't matter if they're white, they're black, whatever, they're brown, whatever. If they're citizens of this country, they are Americans. And and again, man, you shouldn't have to qualify that by race. But again, the fact of the matter is, they don't care. You're starting to understand something that Republicans have understood for a long time. We want less government, not more. Because the bigger the government gets, the more powerful it gets. And the more powerful it gets, the more control it has. And again, people are evil. People are evil. You can talk about employment all you want to. You can talk about the labor participation rate. But guess what? If you ain't making no damn money and you got to get two jobs to pay the same prices or to buy the same amount of stuff that you used to buy and the price is higher than it used to be because of inflation, then guess what? What are you really accomplishing? That's why Trump is on the verge of getting elected, re-elected. Because when he was in office, there was a flourishing economy. There was a whole bunch of other problems. Whole bunch of other problems. And I personally think his return to the presidency is going to be civil war in this country because he's going to be desensitized to bringing anybody together because he's going to be on a revenge tour to get back at everybody who went against him. And I think it could be the worst possible thing for the country. But I can't blame... 50 Cent, for example, when he sits up there and he's tweeting, Eric Adams, I need you to explain this to me. What the hell is going on? Maybe we should consider Trump. When he says something like that, like you can see right here, what he's saying when he said it on his social media page, I can't blame 50 Cent for that. You want to sit up there and excoriate Ice Cube now when he didn't pick sides in 2020, when he wasn't telling you to vote for Biden or Trump, he was just saying, yo, I want to present a plan for black America and see who's willing to listen. And Trump gave the okay and the impression he was willing to listen. You want to call Ice Cube a sellout now? I agree with pretty much everything you're saying, except for one thing. Man, Trump's not going to start a civil war, but he might prevent it. He might prevent it. I mean, really, we have to look at what's going on again at that southern border. And the governors of, of half the states and the country are standing behind Greg Abbott and are willing to send their National Guard troops down there to assist them at that border. 
So again, man, Trump would then start a civil war, but Biden might. You know, hey, look, the guy causing the problems is the guy in the office now. I mean, I know part of you recognize that, but that is what's going on. So again, Trump is not going to start it, but he might prevent it. Trump got 12% of the black vote in 2016. He got 16% of the black vote in 2020. They're projecting he's going to get more than 20% of the black vote in this upcoming election. That's what they're saying. And who's to say black folks would be wrong to vote for him? I told y'all before, I am no Republican. I voted for one Republican in my life. That's Governor Chris Christie in New Jersey because I thought that Corzine was a disaster. I voted for Clinton. I voted for Al Gore. I voted for Barack Obama twice. I voted for Biden, despite the crime bill that incarcerated a whole bunch of people in the 90s that looked like me. I shoved all of that aside. All of it. Because I knew how divisive Trump would be. But as we sit here now, and we watch something like this transpire, where there seems to be more rapt attention being paid to folks who are not even here illegally, nor are from this country, yet we want to turn around and ignore us. The reason why you voted for Barack Obama twice is because, number one, Barack Obama's Democrat. And number two, Barack Obama's black. And again, man, you're more concerned with what people do for, for black people, for brown people. What about all people? What about Americans? What about that? Again, stop stop fracturing this country. Stop dividing this country into groups. That's what people that uh, no, no no offense, man. That's what people that look like you are doing more often than not. You're dividing things into groups. And again, we don't need to do that. You know, as a matter of fact, man, this country for many years now has had equal opportunity, equal rights under the law, which, again, is all it can ever have. But people like you, you know, that's not good enough. As a matter of fact, we have affirmative action and DEI. And again, that's legal discrimination towards people that look like me. We have to be honest about that. But again, man. People like you, you fractured this country. You do. And you said you, you uh, vote for Biden, even though Biden, you know, back in the 90s, supported the crime bill. And that incarcerated people that looked like you. And the fact of the matter is, man, no. People that look like you are incarcerated because they commit crime at high rates. I mean, again, over 50% of all violent crime in the country is committed by people that look like you that are less than 13% of the population. But again, you don't like to talk about that because, again, you like to talk about white supremacy and systemic racism and whatever else, man. That's what you like to talk about and people like you like to talk about. But it's not real. It is not real. And again, it's destroying this country. Destroying it. So again, man, no. Black people would be right to vote for Donald Trump. Not because he's, not because he looks out for black people or a bell, but because he looks out for Americans. He looks out for people in this country. And that should be good enough. But guys, man, if you would, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks. You son of a... You son of a... You son of a... You son of a...